write um, a little something about why they love them. So here we go, Rachel. From Rachel's husband, Josue. A few words about a woman who was loved by God. My wife, Rachel Marie Pagan Garcia, has always been a compassionate person. She's a deep, deep, deep thinker. She's an amazing mom. She makes sure our son Joshua gets everything he needs and make sure he doesn't go to bed hungry. There's no better person to try to grab this bull by the horns and tame him. I'm a wild guy, and it takes the right person to calm me down. Oh, Rachel is that so right person. She's got enough tenderness to melt me into submission, and enough attitude to G-check me when I'm slacking. Okay. Above all this, she loves God. I know she loves God because of how she loves people. She cares and gives herself to people so selflessly. She cries with them. She listens to them, comforts them, cooks and bakes for them. <laughs> She's my gem, and there's Aww. no one I'd rather have by my side. Oh, yeah. Ew, that's yeah. extra gooey? <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Robin. Love you! Alright, so this is written by her lovely husband, Aaron. Something I love about my wife is how she makes everyone feel comfortable around her. I'm not sure how she does this, but everyone instantly knows that she's not fake and they realize that they don't need to be fake either. She's authentic in everything she does. So if she has an opinion, she lets you know it. I love this about her. When she prays, it is as it is an authentic, honest prayer and not just something to look or sound good. This sets a great example for our kids. There are three beautiful kids. Uh, who gets to see Christianity lived out in real life. I love that I get to live life with her and aspire to one day be worthy to be called her husband. I got a lot of work to do to close that gap. And Robin, how long have you been married now? Ten years. Ten years? Um, next one will be six years. Wow. Six years. All right, next up. That's too long. Christina. Let's go. Way too long. So, um, this is written by her lovely husband, Joe. Joey. Uncle Joey, as we like to call him. <laughs> Christina Rios is the bestest, as one female musical poet puts it. As my wife for five years, she's been nothing but caring, attentive, helpful, and loving. As a mother of two, she's been wonderful. One of Christina's greatest qualities is that she's the epitome of what a friend should be. She gives her all and expects nothing in return. In these roles as wife, mother, and friend, she's an image of the one who made her. Jesus is dear in Christina's life, and just like all believers, she's continuing to grow in her faith. I love her with all my heart. She's the woman I want to serve the rest of my days. P.S. She's also super feisty and loud, and I love her for it. But I <laughs> There's the feistiness. Next up, we have a that. single lady that is being pursued by someone hardcore that he asked her to marry her. Ooh. And she said, and no. her name is Christina. No. That's the name of Christina. Yeah. Jesus, right? I know, so, Christina's fiance said, what is his English name? is his first and second language, so it sounds a little... Um, his name is Zabiel. Zabiel. Yes. Zabiel. 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 Christina has a great personality and really cares about the people that she loves. She's faithful to her friends and family and is trustworthy. She's honest and is always trying to be a better person. Her love for God truly shows through her positive outlook and even though she's only 25, <laughs> sorry, her age is... <laughs> she's very mature and she always makes thoughtful decisions. What I love most about Christina is that she never gives up and overcomes most of her fears because she knows that Jesus is with her. She's lovely and a very funny girl who blesses my life every day. Hi, Kelly! And okay. the best for last. Uh, I don't know about that.
she's a delightful friend to a whole lot of folk as well. She's a delightful, she's delightful, not because she's filled with unicorns and butterflies, <laughs> but because she can tame that wild unicorn to ride and capture the precious butterflies in life. <laughs> I love that she loves to share her passion for music and art with others and is great at inviting others to join her in enjoying that. She's supportive, thoughtful, caring, and keeps it real. And that's what I love about her most. Aww. Aww. Well, Liz. <laughs> oh, wait, I was you, Liz? Yes. <laughs> 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 group here of married and single women here, um, different ages from different walks of life, uh, but they do have one thing in common. Can someone point that out for me? Jesus. Their moms, maybe some of them, Jesus. And they love God. Yes, yes Jesus. Jesus is always the right answer. <laughs> 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 So, um, I asked these, I um, gave these ladies uh, a couple of topics of what tonight will be about. As you can see at the front of your program, it says, Lies Women Believe. Someone read this, they're like, Lies Women Believe. About what? I was like, Love! About love! <laughs> oh, okay. Valentine's okay. <laughs> Love. Valentine's Love. Lies Women Believe About Love. And I thought that this would be a good topic that we could all discuss and have them share their wisdom on because there are lots of lies that we believe about love before finding out what true love is. Um, so some of these topics, and we're just going to go right down the line, um, and then a couple of them, if you feel led to answer them, you can share from your own experience, and then afterwards we'll have a little Q&A. So the first lie is, if... I feel something, it must be true. Who would like to answer that? If I feel something, it must be true. Sure. <laughs> 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 provided the questions like I want to say what two weeks ago and stuff so mm -hmm. I had time to like kind of chew on them and the one that um I feel like really <laughs> led to and one that I feel has been a real um a struggle and so like that I'm still working on today is that one you know like yes. if I feel something it must be true and so I just wrote a few things out to um and some verses um to encourage you ladies, um, but then also that are like practical and that I, like I'm not just preaching to y'all, like I'm preaching to myself, to the stuff that I do and need to remind myself. So basically like in, in today's society, we know that like we're told to follow our heart um, or it just feels right. So it must be true. It must be, you know, good, you know, <clears throat> but as um, believers, like, and Jesus, like he is the answer. Um, that is where um, our truth comes from. And so basically we know about sin, we, we know about the fall, um, that that, it tainted everything, you know? So it just, it distorts our reality and it just, it, like there's sin, there's brokenness in this world. So, and because we're not perfect, we can't trust ourselves. Um, and so going, um, to the scriptures, there were some um, a few verses I have wrote it down. Um, in Jeremiah seventeen nine, the heart is more deceitful than all things and desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Um, leading like letting our emotions lead it, lead us is unstabling. So in James one eight, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Um, you know, like things like that, and <clears throat> so like taking heart that we know that God is perfect and so that who should we trust who like not allowing our emotions like in the moment because one moment we can be like really angry and be upset mm -hmm. with someone and then the next minute you know they do something and they're just like oh I don't hate you anymore you know I love you mm -hmm. um 
So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so um, you know, in His Word, it says it um time and time and again that uh, God does not change. You know, mm-hmm. like in Hebrews thirteen eight, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. James one seventeen, who does not change like shifting shadows. Um, Romans eleven twenty nine, for God does not change His mind about whom He chooses and blesses. Numbers twenty three nineteen. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and not then and then not act? Does he promise not and then not fulfill? So just being encouraged that ultimately trusting um, in God and his truth and his word and that just because we might feel something doesn't make it necessarily true. Um, like another transparency thing and then I'll be like let somebody else sorry um <clears throat> like that that statement is basically like emotional reasoning but um so i go to therapy because you know I'm not sure, but we're all kind of like that but it's been good um but talking to my therapist there's something that she's uh told me like to do like every time you are feeling something quickly like okay i hear that here we you know what i'm thinking like let's say um I'm feeling unlovable, you know, I'm feeling like I'm neglected, um, for example, like my dad not being present in my life, there's been times that I felt unloved, unworthy, you know, and, and, and there's something wrong with me because he doesn't want a relationship with me, and starting to believe the lies, oh, well, I'm a failure, I'm unlovable, I'm, un- you know, um, undesirable, you know, in that, in the, because he doesn't want a relationship with me. But then she says, okay, those are the thoughts that you were thinking. I hear it, but what does God say about me? Mm -hmm. In his word, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. You know, and just like the song that we were listening earlier. So always check in our emotions with scripture. Because scripture is God's truth, so that means that it's infallible. That means it's not misleading. It's an error. There's no error in in, in scripture. It's God breathed. It's perfect. It's true. Mm -hmm. That is his very word. So we check our emotions, we check our thoughts. Okay, what does God say? All right, no, devil, you're a liar. No. For me, like, no, Rachel, you're lying to yourself. That's not true about you and stuff like that. I mean, we live in a broken world, and we're going to be hurt, and we're going to go through situations, and and we're raised to, in society, heavily prevalent in this culture, you know, and they'll say things to us. And we might think it's true. We we think that love is, you know, fairy tales and rainbows mm-hmm. is this, and, and it's not hard work, it's not tears, it's not you know, all that lo- like it's all this stuff that is just like nah Disney, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> you got it wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. But um <clears throat> just basically I'm thinking to myself, um, what does God's word say? That is truth, not always my feeling. And um Second, you know, thinking that, thinking through your your thoughts and, okay, what does God's word say? Mm -hmm. What is true? What is actually true? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can we have one more person right there, though? Yes. Also, because, like, Rachel, it was on my heart a lot. That's, because I'm not married yet, so the one who is, like, trying to change his spouse, and I've chosen my spouse very, like, wisely, and that's another topic within itself like what is love love is should be you know a choice something that you decide to do not something you just fall into as as, as unsexy as that sounds I know it's not as romantic but it's like one of the biggest decisions of your life we buy a car we do so much research we buy houses we we nitpick every detail for some reason when it comes to the person we're supposed to grow and create humans with or create a ministry with we seem to just leave that up to something is you know, as fickle as our feelings. Right, right. right and right. that's not biblical, and I know it's right. not, like, what feels good. You know, yeah, it's not, yeah, I know it's not. Well, yeah, it's not effective, yeah, like, we've all been there, but also it's very misleading. It's also very heartbreaking. Like, you know, I could have learned the lessons I learned another way. God chose that way, and I'm grateful for where I'm at. But if I could, I could have done with a little less heartbreak, you know. I could have saved pieces of myself, my mentality, my sanity, my nights. Um, but anyway, so that's a, that's for me, that's another topic. But I just wanted to piggyback up in Romans 7. Um, basically, Paul is writing about how he says, obviously I need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can't will it, but I can't, and I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I really don't do it. 
I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in action. Sometimes something has gone wrong deep within me and it gets the better of me every time. Basically, he's saying like the things that I don't want to do, I do, and the things that I want to do, I can't seem to, to do it. The laws, I break every law, I try to, you know, like us, we're like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, New Year's resolutions, or oh yeah, I'm gonna do this thing, and within our own power, we have no strength. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, at the end, he says that, I, I know the answer, the answer is that <coughs> Christ, you know, love, perfect love, and you know, that God sent the answer to all our issues, and, um, and that includes our emotions. Our, our emotions and feelings should be a gauge, not a guide. I mean, a guy, yeah, they should be a guy, uh, yeah, a gauge, not a guide. They should point to somewhere in our life where, okay, maybe I'm hurting, like Rachel was saying, you know, okay, I'm feeling sad, what inside me is hurting, but they should not be the, the path that we take because they do change. I change. <laughs> I change the way I want my hair, the mm -hmm. lipstick I want to wear, the makeup I want to wear, how I'm feeling like I want to dress, if I feel, you know, fat, or if I feel cute, or if I feel ugly, that changes every day, and God is like, yes, yeah, stay grounded, stay, know, know my truth, because at the end of the day, when lies come to tell you all these things, um, you can fight them, and you can't fight them with, within your own, you know, within your own strength. We don't have that. We need Jesus to fight that for us. That's it. I did just want to say one thing, because when I read that question, the one thing that my mind directly went to was, I, I'm sure you guys have heard it because I've heard it a million times and it always grates on me when I hear somebody say, I just want to speak my truth mm -hmm. or let her tell her <laughs> truth. Yes. Or, and I'm like, that's not a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there's only that's the truth. truth. Yes. Not, not his my side of the story, truth. not her mm -hmm. truth. You know, it's, and, and you spoke to that. You said, like, the Bible is the truth. Yes. And that's what we need to look to to be our guide. Amen. It's, it's a light unto our path. And and that is the only way that we are going to follow. And if we look to, I, I just want to say what I feel to be my truth, mm -hmm. like, then you are misguided. <laughs> You're not looking in the right place. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're only mm -hmm. making sure to mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Um, Can any of you provide, like, a personal example of when that, when your truth failed you? <coughs> That's deep. Life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, the next one, <laughs> since we're talking about love and putting that on people, I have to have a husband to be happy. Mm. <laughs> I have to have a husband to be happy. That is a lie. I would like to answer that. That, that is definitely a lie. Um, I guess one of us. <laughs> Three. <laughs> that is a complete lie. <laughs> I absolutely love my husband, um, but yeah, he uh, he's he is not the one that's gonna make me happy, or anybody's husband for that matter. Um, um, it's funny because a few weeks ago, um, I have a group text with a, a few a close friends of mine. Um, they are also be believers and. One of the questions that they were asking is like, you know, what do you think it's happiness for you? Um, and it's, it, it's, you know, at the moment it's like, oh, well, what is happiness? But um, as a believer, it's just clearly what Rachel and what Robin was saying and what Christina was saying, you know, as believers, our happiness is centered in Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, there. I'm going to say I believe <laughs> now because this is not biblical. But um, one of the things that I, that I see is that life here, there is no such thing. Like if we look in this broken world, like Robin said, there is no such thing as happiness because we're broken. It's only temporarily. So again, going back to the first question is just a feeling of like, yay, this moment is great. Um, and this what we're going on through right now is awesome it feels great um but that's just that's that's at some point it's gonna end um it's temporarily you know the only thing that that is eternal is christ and it is and it's also the word of god obviously the bible so you know no a husband's not going to give you what christ will give you the fulfillment 
that that Jesus is going to give you. Um, you're th that's not going to give it to you, nor your husband, nor your mother or father, for that matter, or sister or best friend, or not even your kids. Um, and and I and you know you guys are mothers. <laughs> I'm a mother. Um, the love that you feel for your child is. It's, it's like mind blowing. It's like when you have a child, it's like I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> like I don't understand these feelings because you feel so much love for that person, um, for that little creature. <laughs> so, so again, you know, Christ is the only sent. That's the same way how Christ loves us. So Christ is the only person that can make you happy. Mm -hmm. Like, as much as I love my husband, and he tries, he's a great man. He has so many um, <laughs> um, faults, just like I have so many faults. Um, so, yeah, no. <laughs> That's just very obvious that a man or a husband or anybody, you know, can't make you happy. Only Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think... So this is weird. <clears throat> so it's kind of weird that I'm one of the single people that's like answered this question about like a husband's mm -hmm. not gonna make you happy. Because, you know, there have been times where I was like not single by choice. I'm like pouting in my singleness. Mm -hmm. Um, but there have been times when I have chosen it because my mom and my grandmother always used to say to me, I know that's right. 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 It's better to be alone than to be stuck with somebody that doesn't suit you. Mm -hmm. And there have been countless examples in my life uh, that I've seen, you know, there have been times where I was like, ooh, yeah, mommy was right. <laughs> <laughs> and there are times when I've been like, in my own life, I've been like, oh, you know what, mom's right. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I sort of you know, I'm like, you know, let him go or whatever. But, um, yeah, because we don't even make ourselves happy. No. Yeah. We don't even make ourselves happy. Mm -hmm. So how could somebody outside of ourselves mm -hmm. make us happy? That's not right. possible. Mm -hmm. right. 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 No one here. Yeah. Can help you yeah. I think it's great that single women answer that question. Right. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, like, you. it doesn't yeah. have to be. I think yeah. I'm married it's more that I monumental that. for a woman that's really in, engaged in her singleness and praising God through her singleness mm -hmm. and enables her to deserve herself because these young girls out here are not deserving. So yeah. when we have young women that are single and that can bring that light, like, yeah, yeah. it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It is hard. Mm -hmm. But just to be able to walk in grace and say, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. not fair. It's not, it's, and it's honestly, like, it's not fair to put that pressure on somebody yeah. to make mm -hmm. you happy. That mm -hmm. is a tall yeah. order to fill. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. you said, you can make fail. yourself happy. I can exactly. do everything I want to do within my heart. I'm like, I really want to go, whatever, to the zoo today. Okay, I can do that, and I will be happy for that moment. And then I've done everything in that day that I wanted to do, and I still fall short, mm -hmm. you know, of making myself happy. So, and that's not fair for someone to put that on you, and it's not fair for you to put that on somebody. Nobody is meant. Yeah. Not your mama, not your daddy, not a child, not a dog. I mean, they can bring you moments of joy, yeah. but expecting them to fill your cup and to, to, mm -hmm. to fill you up when most of the time they're not even full. You know, it's it's not it's not it's not it's not gonna happen. You know, it's like one of those things where it's like it's better you just know it's never gonna happen. You know? and even the yeah, exactly. So, your society. I've been working with a lot of young moms, and the society is so bad that yeah. like like they easily just fall for whatever they say because yeah, of like yeah, their their parents didn't like teach them ahead. Or like they just didn't get that love from their loved ones, right. so they find they try to find it in someone else, yeah. and right. that's where a lot of young moms mm -hmm. and a lot of older women also go wrong mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we try to like they try to find it in other people mm -hmm. when they should just find it in Christ. Yeah, because right. you, just said, it. you just said it. You just said it. Society, society is already trying to establish. Oh, mm -hmm. this is what you know. Oh, this is. is your uh, way, whatever you feel, mm -hmm. is what you know. It's what it's gonna make you reach to be happy. I feel as though, like, as being a young mom, my parents didn't follow Christ, mm -hmm. so I feel like if it's not, like, if it's not brought to them, or if it's not around them, <coughs> how are they supposed to mm -hmm. be Christ or follow it if if it's not around them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like my mom believes in Christ, my parents believe in Christ. But they just don't follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. hard. Absolutely. So, like, yeah. I see a lot of young moms know who Christ is, just don't know, like, how to follow yeah, Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's why they believe in 
what they say and that's why yeah. they believe in mm-hmm. other love other than Christ's love. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important that we have mentors and people exactly. even outside of our own family. That village is so mm-hmm. important. And I'm glad that you just said that's that good. you don't know um, mm-hmm. or that some, some people don't know how to follow. Um, and maybe this is another topic, but I will throw it out there. But that is the importance of looking for a place where you congregate. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people, especially nowadays, it's like, oh, you know, I don't have to go to church to believe in God or to serve mm-hmm. God or to be a believer. Mm-hmm. No, that is, unfortunately, that's a big lie. Yeah, that's <laughs> that the world is teaching you. <laughs> you do need to congregate. You have to find, you have to pray. Um, if you truly, again, if you truly want to follow and seek Christ and have Christ as your center of your life, you have to look for a church where you know that the truth is being um, taught, yeah. and you have to con- congregate. It's not, you know, and just yeah, and just pray to for people to come into your lives. Exactly. Right. Um, so. I think prayer, like we, like we've engaged into our leadership program, and you know, our leadership meeting and stuff. Prayer is so monumental. Because Maisie is not a girl that has that type of mm-hmm. surrounding. Um, just for instance, like myself, like my parents grew up into Christ, but they didn't always they have that example, like you were mm-hmm. saying. But I had an aunt that came alongside me and was like, I'm going to take you to church. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you what a Christian woman mm-hmm. is. And, mm-hmm. and not overriding my parents, but actually being an example to me mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. So it's so yeah, important that we you. pray for a village for girls yeah. to surround up because they don't they're not going to automatically want to go to church i know exactly. i didn't no, exactly. yeah exactly i didn't want to go to church what mm-hmm. church mm-hmm. what is your name i had a comment on the question at hand it went somewhere else but <laughs> when i had it um so uh the question was do you need a husband to be like yeah, feel yeah, like satisfied or fulfilled um i kind of we uh a couple weeks back i talked in the club talk and i kind of talked about like how Christ in in scripture he says like all these things he made great and made perfect and the one thing that he knew was wrong is that we need companionship mm-hmm. um so it's not hard it's not horrible to like want a husband right. it's just right. like right. you need to think of Christ first Christ has to be the center of the balance mm-hmm. and the center of every relationship you have mm-hmm. uh, and that's how it like prospers so definitely Right, and to piggyback on that, so it's not wrong. We are relational beings. We are made in the yeah. image of Christ. So, and He is a relational being, like Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, we, and we are made, you know, in His image. So, yeah. the want, the desire yeah. to have a companion is not wrong and simple in and of itself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do we distort it? Obviously, in our brokenness yeah. and the sin and the fall. But, um, yeah, like how you said. Christ has to be number one in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is something also just talking and experience in myself. And even though my parents were believers, I'm um, growing up, they did not model a godly marriage for me. So, definitely different than, than how my marriage is. Although it's not perfect, obviously, because it never will be on this side of eternity. But um, it's nothing from what my... Because looking back and doing the... Um, um, being in God's word myself, I'm like, oh, my dad didn't love my mom the way that Christ loves the church, mm-hmm. you know, and, and things like that. And so, um, but God needs to be center completely of your life. Like, if you get a husband, good. If you don't, good. Like, yeah, it's not going right. to it's not gonna <laughs> take away from you. It's not <laughs> going to add. Better. And I, I mean, I know it's easier said than done, and I'm not saying yeah. it in the sense of like, yeah. oh, but you're married, so you can't yeah. relate. No, because I once was a single woman, right. you know, so I can talk to that. And me being uh, married and also me being, yes, a believer, but I'm not perfect in any way. Yeah. My husband doesn't add to my um, mm-hmm. salvation and he doesn't mm-hmm. take away from exactly. it because yeah. ultimately when it's all said and done when yes. when I'm standing before the father I'm yeah. not going to be standing with my nope. husband nope. Nope. Yep. Yeah. 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 it also it also yeah. says in scripture that God chooses people Ooh, yeah. to be by themselves too like yeah. you're not always <laughs> like <laughs> destined to have right. I mean and, and, and that in that God I feel is it definitely will make it clear yes. and, and yeah. that's not Exactly. But what you call it, like, it, like, yeah, I definitely don't want anyone to walk away and be like, oh, we're saying not to get married or seek someone. Yeah, else. yeah. Well, that, I would definitely encourage you to be praying for your spouse, even though you don't have that spouse right here, you know, right now in this present moment, mm-hmm. God. But 
you your first desire should be your growth in Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and growing in him and that shouldn't be the number one, you know, like ultimate goal. He will he will bring it. He will bring that 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 companion, he will bring that partner and it will be worth the wait. It would it would definitely be I mean, I was married young. I got married at 21. But when my husband came into my life, I wasn't seeking, not saying, okay, not to like boast of myself, but I think I got to a point where I, I read this book and I was just like, okay, I'm going to give up on, you know, trying to find a mate because that was just like so heavy in my, in my head. But that was also because of, I was lacking and searching for that love from my father that I wanted, you know, and not going and seeking my heavenly father. So I was like so preoccupied and uh, I want, you know, a husband and I'm going to ultimately be fulfilled, whatever the case may be, da, da, da. and then it might happen like this, it might not, but I mean, and then come along, you know, my husband, we meet, we become friends and stuff like that, and like little did I know that, you know, once meeting him, that he was going to end up being my husband, but just encouraging you ladies that enjoy your time, even us married ladies, we still need that time, like we need time with Christ, like even though we're married, it's not that like. How do I how do I put it? Um, enjoy, and ultimately, like I feel like it's also a good reminder for myself that yes, even though I'm married, ultimately, my husband and my son are not <coughs> number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is Christ. My relationship with Christ mm -hmm. is the most important because my reflection. This is a big one and one that is convicting me my relationship or lack thereof with Christ is going to reflect in my marriage and yes. how I relate and how I love and how I act with my husband. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. And also, I just want to add to the whole thing. Obviously, we're talking about love, and so we're talking about husband. Can I get a coffee in this video? I think you can replace that word with anything. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. 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 I don't need exactly. this dream job that, right. that I... Right. Think is going to make me happy. I don't need to like have Do a things. car yeah. or travel or whatever that thing is that you're seeking. Or like, I don't like living here where it's cold in the winter. I want to go somewhere <laughs> warm. Like, that isn't going to make me happy. I might think it's going to right. having sunshiny days all the time and living by the beach. But if I think that that is what's going to bring me happiness, if I'm mm. placing my desire mm -hmm. on something exactly. material or, mm -hmm. or an idea, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. I'm going to be let down yes. right. mm -hmm. every That's single time. Then. When you get right. to that beach, you're going to complain. It's too hot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, like, I'm in the Everywhere. There are flies biting us. So, so I'm just saying, you know, like, we're talking about husbands and, and yeah, like, there's going to be a time in your life where you're looking for something and, mm -hmm. and you're looking for fulfillment and you're going to, and, and so then you get that.